Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you where and how to EQ piano. And I've been getting a bunch of comments uh, asking for this in some of my other videos over the past couple months. So let's just get into it. I've got three magic frequencies for piano that I'm gonna walk through with you. And I'm gonna start from the top end and work my way down because that's kind of how I like to work. I typically, the first move I make is just adding some more excitement and energy. So let's just check out the song first. This is a song by Nick Johnston. Little piano intro there, and then that band kicks in. If I bypass the EQ, you can see it's actually doing a fair amount of work here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just wipe out the EQ and I'll walk through everything with you. The first frequency is 5K, and this is for the brightness, the energy, clarity in the piano. So you can hear it's a pretty dark and warm piano sound. So that nice 5K shelf, it just adds some brightness, but you know, if, if it was up a lot higher, like I could boost like 10 or 12K and it's gonna give it some, uh, some airy lift, but it's not gonna have that presence. It's not gonna make the piano feel like it's closer to you. It's not gonna make it sound like there's a little more energy in the plane, which is what you can get with the, the 5K boost here. And the amount you would use just depends on what else is going on in the mix and really how much energy and attack and how much you need it to cut through. Okay, so 5K for the top end, the presence. Now the next frequency is one and a half K, 1.5. Now really it could be anywhere between 1K and 2K, but 1.5 is a safe bet in the middle. So let me show you what that sounds like. So that's a pretty huge difference. Like all of a sudden the piano comes right up front in the mix. It's right up there with the guitars and it starts to feel like it's it's really holding a lot of space in the mix. literally like the difference between the piano being a background instrument and being like a priority instrument. And not only that, the more of this one to two K that you have in a piano track, the better it's gonna translate. And I know that, you know, if I hit solo here, I mean, hey, if you're sitting there thinking, man, it sounds a lot nicer and more natural without that one and a half K boost, I'd actually would agree with you. But in the context of the mix, which is why you can't make these moves in solo, it actually really comes into a nice position. So even though boosting this area a lot on piano, it might sound a bit weird. It might sound a little honky or nasally to us, especially in solo, but in our nice studios and our nice studio monitors. But really when you take it out into a car or you know, earbuds or whatever you're listening to, that's when you really do need a lot of that range for a piano. All right, let's get to the low end. So for the low end on a piano, I'm typically doing something in the 100 to 200 hertz area. And what I'm doing just depends on the source track, the actual piano tone, and also what else is going on in the mix. So I'm either gonna be boosting in that area or cutting. So in the case of this mix, I believe in my actual final mix, I was, I was cutting. So let's check this out. Yeah, so in the, in the context of a rock mix like this, you 
probably don't need a lot of low end in the piano. So I think this actually sounds good with a cut uh, with a shelf around 150. Again, in solo, might sound a little thin, might sound a little too mid-rangey, but in the context of the mix. Even with our other boosts, I still think the piano sounds a little, almost too warm and too dark there. I do want it to be pretty forward in the mix. And so in this case, I would, you know, back off that low end a little bit, but Sometimes, and in some mixes that I've done, I've actually boosted this area on piano because I want it to sound fuller. And maybe the arrangement is, you know, pretty sparse, or the piano maybe has even more of a central role. And so you want it to take up more of that space. Um, and it can sound nice in piano, just boosting around that same area. Now, if you're going to do that at 200, and by the way, I would usually use a shelf in this case, kind of just a nice gentle boost in that low end. So around 200, closer to that area, you're going to get more of kind of a fuller wooly warmth to it. And then if you go down more like 100, it's just going to have a little more weight. Get a little more of that thumpiness from the low end of the piano without maybe as much of the kind of thicker low mid frequencies. But you got to be careful with piano again. Uh, this is really an instrument that can mess you up if you're spending too much time in solo because you probably wouldn't make the moves that I've just made there. You, you, it's just so pleasing to hear more of a scooped mid range, more of a sparkly top end, and a really big fat bottom end with the piano by itself, right? But in the context of a rock mix, you really don't need that much bottom end, uh, and there's not a lot in my mix of this song, but I think it totally works. All right, now I'm gonna show you an example in a different song, but as I load that up, I uh, just wanna tell you about my mixing cheat sheet. Now, funny enough, uh, piano is actually an instrument that is not listed on my mixing cheat sheet, but every other track in your mix, you know, kick, snare, toms, other drum tracks, bass, guitar, vocals, I've got all of my go-to magic frequencies outlined on this cheat sheet. So you can download that for free. It's uh, at the link in the description below, or you can just go right to mixcheatsheet.com and you can just have all of my go-to magic frequencies listed out for you all in one place. Okay, one more example to show you. Uh, this is a song I mixed for the band Emery and it's a Foo Fighters cover of uh, Everlong, uh, probably one of the best, if not the best Foo Fighters song. And they did this really cool stripped down version. So let's check out the EQ I ended up with on the piano here. And there's not gonna be any surprises here. So on the top end, around 5K, we're boosting. Now I actually have this automated. I just uh, changed it there by accident there. Let's uh, switch that. But you can see in the quiet verses, I've got the top end down a bit, and then when we hit the pre-chorus and chorus, um, I've brought that top end up even more. She if everything can ever be this real for so that's the brightest the piano gets in this song. So really, it's again, it's dependent on the context of the mix, right? The the busier and uh, more energetic this entire mix becomes, the more I have to compensate for that and add a little bit more top end to the piano to have it kind of stay in its spot presence wise. And then again, further down the EQ, same frequency as I showed you before. So one and a half K, doing a nice boost there. So again, background instrument. More of a focal point with that mid-range boost there. Uh, no cuts or anything in the in the mid-range area. Notice I didn't say anything about you know cutting any mud or honkiness kind of in the in the broader mid-range. I 
typically don't really have to worry about that with the, with the piano. And then here at 200, uh, we're dipping out some low end again. This was just a, a really dark and warm source track. So there you go, different song, pretty different vibe, uh, different source tone, but you can hear how those same frequencies tend to be the hot spots for piano. And I think you'll find that pretty much across the board. It's just a matter of how much more or less you need of those. So I think this one was pretty easy, guys. And if you've been watching my magic frequency videos already, you're probably starting to see some common trends, right? There's certain frequency areas that I often go back to for the same things because you know certain frequencies just accomplish the same thing that they serve the same purpose really regardless of what instrument you're eqing so hopefully you're watching these and you're beginning to piece that together in your mind and if you haven't seen all of my magic frequency videos yet then uh here's the playlist go ahead and check it out